What's up guys? My name is Seth, you're watching Petrol 360 and today we're going to be back working on the F100, try to get this front end back on the truck. Alright, and so the first step on getting the whole front end back together is getting everything repainted. Um, I've got most of the parts already painted. I did the hinges or the latch and things like that. Went ahead and sandblasted those since they fit in the sandblasting cabinet. But for the bumper itself, I'm going to have to use a little bit of a different technique. So again, the original owner or previous owner had uh, just, I think, just spray painted this black and the grill black, and that looks awful. I'd much rather go to white, and I'm pretty sure that underneath this, it is white. So there's a couple techniques I'm going to use to try and make this thing look correct. Uh, I think it'll look awful if I just spray paint it white. It'll be too new, and it won't match the truck. So first one I'm going to try to do is rub this with uh, acetone, see if I can get this old paint to lift off. And if that doesn't work, then we'll sand this back and just completely repaint it. But we're going to try some different techniques to try and make it look patinaed and uh, look correct. So um, grab some acetone and get to work. All right, well, the acetone did nothing, um, kind of as expected, but I want to start with the least invasive method yet first. So now I've got a little bit of a paint stripper. I'm just going to put some of this on there and just see what happens. I'm planning on having to sand down this entire thing, but I want to try these techniques first, see what's going to work best. All right, well, didn't lift very much paint, and it looks like there's nothing but rust or bare metal underneath this, so don't think stripping the paint will even do us any good. So I guess we're just going to go uh, straight to uh, sanding. All right, so I got the front bumper pretty much where I want it. So the bottom half is scuffed up the uh, black paint that's on there. And I took quite a bit of the paint off the top of it. And I did that um, for reasons you'll kind of see whenever I um, go through and actually paint this. But this side has a lot of rust. And on this side, it still has some original paint left on it. So they didn't get all the paint off here, which is OK. Um, <clears throat> The whole idea of painting this is trying to make it look like it's more or less original. So this is going to have some patina on it um, to kind of match with the rest of the truck. Like I said, a brand new white bumper would look out of place on an old truck. So we're going to try and make this fit in as much as we can. But I'm not going to have time to paint this tonight. It's starting to get a little dark. And what I'm going to do instead is go ahead and bring the grill in here and get it prepped. All I'm going to do is rough it up with a Scotch-Brite pad. So here's the grill. It is actually a grill for a 64 F100, as you can see, because the fog lights sit in the grill itself instead of up here on this upper valence. Um, somebody at some point has swapped this out from a 66 to a 64. I'm sure, it probably got in a wreck or something like that, um, which is okay because I actually like the 64 more than any other truck. So I was going to remove the upper valence, but the hardware holding this on is extremely rusty, and I feel like it's a lot safer just to go ahead and leave it on, and we'll tape this off and um, keep it protected. What I'm going to do with this is tape off that while I'm sanding and red scotch bright pad just to scuff this up, give the new coat of paint something to bite onto so we don't have too much flaking issues. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off uh, getting these parts prepped and I'll see you guys tomorrow when I'm ready for paint.
All right, guys, so we're ready to paint, and we're going to show you kind of the process that I'm going to go with, and it's very different, so hang with me. So obviously, I'm going to go ahead and wipe down our parts with wax and grease remover, and then we're going to put grease on them. We're going to put grease in very particular places to try and emulate rock chips. So what I'm going to do is dab my finger in this and just touch a couple places, and what that's going to do is make sure that that paint doesn't stick there as if there's an old rock chip. So I've done this before. It works really well, and it looks uh, pretty natural. Something else I'm going to try is I'm going to put chain lube and any kind of lubricant or silicon based or oil based product will probably work. But I'm going to take this and spritz just a little bit over very specific areas to try and make sure look, look, it look like the, um, the paint just isn't adhering very well. I am going to use Rust-Oleum Gloss White. I figured that's going to be the best, cheapest option um, and shoot that through a Harbor Freight gun. But uh, yeah. We're going to uh, try and get everything moved outside, get the compressor going, and uh, get this set up and show you some of the techniques I'm going to try and the gun as well to try and make it look aged. So the whole idea with all these products is just to make it look old like it's been on the truck for a really long time. All right, so got the parts moved outside. I haven't wiped them down yet or anything because I want to go ahead and get our paint mixed so it can be sitting and doing its thing while we're doing that. So again, white Rust-Oleum. Just cheap stuff. I mean, everybody's got access to this, so it's cheap. That's why I use it. Gonna split it this time half and half with acetone. Um, do it a little bit thinner than I normally would. I'm just gonna try it and see. Um, mixing cup. And I had some people ask about this on my Instagram account, and so these are just squeeze bottles. And um, you know, these are this is sodium hydrox. I don't know what that is. But anyway, you can get these for alcohol and everything. This was the cheapest brand. Um, it just, they're all the same thing. This one just says a different uh, component or chemical. But you can take these and squirt out acetone, and it's super nice for cleaning out your guns and just cleaning up afterwards. So I definitely recommend these if you're going to paint quite a bit. All right, so now comes the unconventional part is we're actually going to put grease on a freshly prepped part. Um, and yeah, like I said, the whole idea of this is to make rock chip marks in the bumper. So think about it while you're doing it. The lower it is on the vehicle, the more chips it's going to have, the higher up it's going to have less. So the bumper is going to have quite a few, grill is going to have quite a bit less. But um, literally, we're just plopping grease on here. Okay, so I've got my grease all laid out, and what's nice about the grill is I can actually see where the original uh, rock chips were, so I put the grease on top of those, so it'll have the texture underneath it to make it look realistic. So this is the unconventional part, so I'm going to use this uh, chain loop because it sprays out kind of how I want it, um, and it's just going to leave little dots everywhere, kind of like the paint's failing, like something spilled on it or something like that, so... This is I'm not a little sure about, but I uh, figured we'd give it a try. Just anything to try to make this thing look older, like it's naturally aged from you know living a hard life. So I'm only going to do this on one section. I'm only going to do it here on the driver's side as well. Oop, there we go. All right, that's all I'm going to do. Hopefully that works out the way I think it will. So we'll go ahead and uh, get our paint in our gun and come out and shoot it. All right, let's shoot. All right, guys, so got the gun all prepped up here. Um, so the technique I'm going to start with is shooting from the opposite direction of the sun. So if you think about a truck that's going to be sitting out somewhere for a really long time, all the sun's going to be coming you know, directly down at the, uh, the part, and that's where it's 
typically going to wear out. So the top of the bumper is going to be worn out, the leading edge of the, um, the grill here. So that's why I left um, the top part of the bumper exposed. So it's bare metal. So I'm not going to get very much paint on it and it's going to rust again, which is exactly what we want. We want to like it look natural, look real like it did, um, like it's been sitting on the truck for 15 years. So I'm going to come down at this angle and that's about all I'm going to shoot is from this direction, really. I may on the grill come back from another direction because the grill's probably going to have more paint on it, but the bumper, I'm only going to shoot from this direction. And whatever I get on the top is what I get on the top, and the rest of it's just going to rust and look natural. So I guess we'll uh, go ahead and shoot this stuff. I'm going to start with the bumper because that's going to be easy if I mess up to re-sand uh, and uh, get going again. All right, so I've already got two coats on here. They're looking pretty good. Um, what I'm gonna do for the very last coat is just a dusting. And so what I'm gonna do is turn my fluid uh, nozzle down so I'm barely getting any paint out because what I wanna do is dry spray. I'm gonna do that from the opposite angle a little bit just to dust on some paint. Um, a lot of times whenever you see paint on trucks and stuff that's really old, it'll be kind of dry and powdery. So we're trying to give it that look, um, put some essentially bad paint on top of this from the direction that the sun will be baking the paint essentially. So like I said, I'm gonna close up my fluid uh, needle a little bit, um, try to get some dry spray. All right guys, so we got it all painted up. Bumper as well. And so here you can kind of see where I left the top of the bumper pretty open with that dry spray. I help to uh, feather the edge in, so kind of make it look as natural as possible. That's pretty difficult. And then if you look down this, I know it's kind of bright, but you see where I've got the grease on it. So that one turned out pretty good. Grill turned out really good. This one, of course, has more paint on it, but you can see down here along this bottom edge, it's still a little bit of the black is coming through. So it's like it's been beat with the sun and everything. And we've got grease marks on it as well for the rock spots. And then I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it's so bright. Um, let's see if I can get it darker. There we go. So this is where some of that uh, chain lube ended up. It's bubbling up a little bit there and it's also a little bit of a different color. So I think it did what I want it to do, which is just very subtly add a different level, a different layer onto this grill. So try to make it look as old and original as it possibly can. So. It is super sunny outside today, so hopefully these will uh, dry up fairly quickly. It'll be probably five or six hours before I really touch them anyway, but all right, <clears throat> thanks for sticking for this part. So while this is drying, I might be working on the gas tank to get that back in the car. All right, and there we go. Holy smokes, that looks so much better than that flat black. So got the whole front end put back together. Okay guys, well it is actually a couple months in the future. I'm editing this video tonight and I found out that the audio for the last couple clips is corrupt. So I wanted to go ahead and give you guys an update on everything and show you how this whole thing looks. Now we actually have some rust growing on the bumper so it's starting to look pretty nice. So as you guys can see here, wherever we left the uh, bare metal of course we got some rust and that's matching in really well and then our rock chips are showing up here all we did was once the paint dried we just rubbed it off so these don't look 100% natural you can see where the grease kind of strung off here a little bit but honestly they look pretty stinking good and we have the ones down on the bumper as well and we're starting to get some marks where the rust is starting to run down on this thing and actually look pretty natural so, thank you guys for checking out this video. I really do appreciate you sticking around and watching all the way to the end. Down in the link in the description, I have some of the tools and uh, different things that I use. Uh, Amazon links to those. If you guys order using those links or order anything in Amazon, if you click on those links, it does help me out a little bit. Not very much, but you know enough to buy a couple little tools here and there. And um, anyway, thank you guys for watching the video, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.